What is up, you amazing people? It is I, Nima, and today I want to talk about a game I picked up that just looked really interesting, and that game is Coffee's Quest. I know what you're thinking. It's Kofi's Quest. Because it looks like Kofi Kingston. The wrestler? No. It's actually Kofi. <laughs> and if I'm being honest, that bothers me. Why don't you stick around and find out if anything else about this game bothers me nearly as much as the way that they pronounce Kofi. But before we get into that, I do want to remind you guys to please hit that like and subscribe button. If you don't, my throat will continually sound like this. Yes, I will sound like Kermit the Frog and Ben Shapiro had a love baby. I love allergies, don't you? I don't know if I'm complaining. On to Kofi's Quest, or Coffee's Quest as the game so lovingly pronounces it. Anyway, so this game is a very interesting game. It has some really great dynamics and some very unique aspects of the game that I think are really cool and something that should be explored and, and, and definitely messed with, but it also needs a lot of quality of life upgrades and patches. Well, first we'll start off, though, with the actual story of the game. You can tell right away that the game is quite meta, and the whole story of the game isn't as important as the interactions in the game but so what happens is essentially there is two characters at the very beginning one looks like a master samurai and the other one looks just kind of like a bushido student or underling or something but anyway they're being attacked by some unknown entity and the master gives the student this bottle and says you protect this with your life whatever happens this bottle must not come in the hands of these whatever evil creatures are and the uh the student like falls from a really great height well that's the last you see of him for quite a while. In fact, honestly, you kind of forget that he existed. Anyway, you're then welcomed into the world of Coffee and Lime. As they're hanging out on their couch, playing video games, watching TV, all made of wood, which is pretty awesome, and just being, I don't know, I, I would say, like, their general demeanor is very Beavis and Butthead, like, Gen X kid, you know, kind of anti-establishment, and I... I'm here for it. Like, I loved that aspect of them. And I, I love the way that Lime is. Like, he's so negative. And Coffee, in his own right, is also very, pretty much negative. Anyway, their game system breaks down. So, they decide that, uh, well, Coffee decides he needs to go try to fix this issue. But while he's out and around... He finds some local village kids who basically crown him the commander of their army. And in that moment, that's when you learn the combat, or at least the, the main combat of the game. And there's essentially a battle between orcs and these village kids. And it, a lot of it seems to be kind of fun and tongue-in-cheek, but it does escalate to something real, as you do find that Bushido student, or whoever he is, and you find out that he lost his bottle. Well, this is enough to make the village kids actually get angry, and in this moment, you now have an army. These village kids, some elves who step in, which I don't know why, I think they were just there for the village kids. I'm not, they really don't expand on why they're there, but they're there. And this Bushido student, that bottle that the Bushido student, like, so coveted, is now in the hands of the orcs, and now you have to get it back. That's basically where this game jumps off. A combat in this game is very original, also borrows from a game like Pikmin or even Lemmings to an extent, but it needs some definite quality of life upgrades. And one reason I say this is because when you get a part of your army into a battle or yourself into a battle, you really need the backup because the game isn't easy and the enemies will do some major damage. But the problem is, is when you're moving your army, it is often easy to target things like the grass or a random chunk of fence that happens to be around and i really think that they should have like more of an automatic lock on when it comes to attacking the enemies and not other things in the vicinity of a combat because just that amount of time can be enough where your other army like let's say your archers don't have the support they need and they're overran now this is pretty much a forgiving system so it's not like a horrible thing and restarting a battle isn't a big deal but it is enough to make you kind of frustrated by the fact that you have to constantly refill your ranks and that itself is made pretty easy by giving a horn that you're you're given to where you have to use motivation quote unquote <laughs> which you build up through the battles to recruit more people from your headquarters and they just kind of fill in and, and so this, this is where it becomes kind of like lemmings or something where you don't really care about any of them they all die and you get more anyway or they get hurt and go back to the headquarters and there is a bit of a rock paper scissors aspect where the archers are going to do better against long range attacks and the let's say you know shielded guys are going to do better against the uh the spears and, and all of that does kind of play into it to an extent but the 
fact is the battles are so quick that it kind of doesn't matter. And before you know it, the battles are over anyway. Now, as I talked about quality of life, there are some other things that are just a pretty big problem, and that is navigation. I don't know how many times that I was leading my army somewhere, and I was told not to go here, It's too, you can't go here yet, it's too early, blah blah blah, and the reality is, the problem was, I wasn't leading them in the right order. Meaning, I had to take my army, move them to the next level first, before I could move myself. And it was just really annoying, because there is no hint, no nothing on where to go, so you kind of run around with like a chicken with its head cut off for quite a while, trying to figure out where to go. And I'm a big fan of what I like to call the go here idiot beacon. And you see this in a lot of games where it just tells you by highlighting somewhere on the map or by an arrow, something telling you where to go. But this has none of that, and in fact, it almost makes it more confusing by making it that there is a certain order in in which you have to go to move on to the the next level. Yeah, that's a problem. That's really annoying. And again, there was a point, like, I probably spent like an hour not sure where to go. And I was right the entire time. I just didn't realize what order I needed to send them in, because I didn't know that that mattered. (laughs) But as far as, like, writing goes, I absolutely love this game on that aspect. This made me laugh a lot and really, in a way, like, made the characters really genuine to me. They weren't as sparkly and bubbly as you see a lot of characters. They're pretty negative and just real life, and I like that. With that being said, I don't like the voice acting because it almost sounds like text-to-speech, and I believe it's because it's from maybe, like, Northern Europe. I don't know exactly where the, the voice actors are from, but when they're actually voice acting, sounds cool and fine. But there's times when you're not in like cutscene type things and you're talking to them and they'll still use the, I think it's text to speech. It just sounds so fast and mumbled that I can't really understand it. And I would rather them just not use it at all because it does sound, I don't know, just, it it sounds bad to the ear and it doesn't sound right. It sounds very foreign. And I don't mean that (laughs) in in a bigot standpoint. I just mean like foreign from a human. I'm also not a big fan of the music, to be honest. Like pretty early on, I remember that there was this like horn sound like this horn music that just it made me stop like made me turn off the sound honestly because it was just like very i don't know it was almost depressing and (laughs) it it just uh eerie but i didn't like it it didn't match the game because the game even though it is kind of negative and funny but it's light-hearted and I mean, in many ways, this game is presented like a sitcom. Like, it'll have jump cuts and stuff. And things that you would see, like, in a classic, like, 90s, early 2000s sitcom. Which, again, I like. So, for me, this game is a mixed bag. It's, in some aspects, really good. I think it just needs a few different, like, quality of life upgrades to be really good. At the same time, though, I could see where people who are more a fan of traditional games and don't really like the exploration that's involved with this or the trial and error as it is. And I could just see a number of people not liking that. And I could see a number of people not liking the writing and the character demeanor in general. Some people really don't like negative and, you know, that Beavis and Butthead generation. But, I don't know, ultimately, I would say it's a game that you should put on your wish list if you're thinking about getting, especially if you like the kind of Pikmin, kind of RTS style of battle with, as it stands, the game is like $14.99 on sale right now, but it's down 25%. So I really wouldn't recommend anyone to pick it up at $20. But I do think it's one of those games that if it goes on sale, it's definitely worth a pickup. It's a lot of fun and it's very lighthearted, like I said. But there are those aspects of the game that will make you hit your head up against a wall because you're attacking a piece of wood instead of attacking the enemy that's right in front of you. And literally your entire team is, is going down in heaps because you're attacking the wrong thing. And it just, it, they make it very difficult to to actually target the enemy and that that was just such a huge problem for me but anyway that's my thoughts on the game you know if you guys have looked into it because that was my thing i saw like a few images of it and i was like this game looks really cool it's really interesting i love the art style to be honest but yeah let me know if you picked it up or if you're thinking about it coffee's quest i'm interested in any and all comments you guys have just share them down below let me know what games you're playing let me know how everything's going with you i appreciate each and every one of you like always i'm wishing you all health wealth and above all i hope you're truly happy because you guys make me happy take care